Hi, and welcome to this introduction of the RML Editor. The RML Editor is a graphical user interface that helps you with the creation of RML rules. And in this introduction, we will explain some of the features of the RML Editor. When you open the RML Editor, you see three different panels. On the left side, you have the input panel. In the middle, the modeling panel, and on the right, the results panel. The input panel will contain the raw data that is loaded. This is the data for which you would like to have the RDF. The modeling panel will contain the RML rules. It uses graphs to visualize them. You are also able to edit them via this panel. The results panel will contain the RDF that is generated when the rules in the modeling panel are executed on the data in the input panel. Now let's create our own rules with an example. We have raw data about movies and their directors in the CSV format. The data about the movies is in a CSV file called movies.csv and the data about their directors is in a CSV file called directors.csv. We load these files into the RML editor by doing the following. We click on file in the upper left corner and navigate to open data source file and click on CSV because our data is stored in CSV files. In the window that appears, we select both files and click Open. We see now both files in the input panel on the left. The movies.csv for example has four columns. One for the ID of the movie, one for its title, its release year and the ID of its director. It also has the color orange, but we will come back to colors later. At the bottom of the panel, you can see a sample of the loaded data. Here it's a table because we are dealing with a CSV file. If you click on the arrow next to the movies, you can select one of the other data sources. In our case, we have the CSV file with information about the directors. Now, let's start with creating some rules for the movies. In RDF, every tuple has a subject. This is also the first rule that we will create. To create that rule, we need to decide how the subject, or to be specific its IRI, will be created. For this example, we would like to have an IRI with as first part example.com, followed by the ID of the movie. To create such a rule, we drag the ID of the movie from the input panel to the modeling panel. When we release the ID, a window appears and we have to select what we want to create. In our case, it's a new entity, because we are defining the subjects for the movies. An orange circle appears with ID in it. However, the rule is not complete yet. We hover over the circle and click on the menu icon. This will allow us to edit the details of the rule. First, we will update the IRI in the IRI field, which is the second one in the window that just appeared. The curly brackets mean that to create the IRI, the value of the ID will be used of each movie, and that is what we want. We next add example.com in front of it. Now that we have defined the IRI, we can also say what the type is of a movie, or in other words, what the class is. For this we can either type the IRI of the class ourselves, or search in the linked open vocabularies. Let's do the ladder. We click on the magnifying glass and a new window appears. We type movie and hit search. We get a list of possible classes that are found in the linked open vocabularies. We select the class from schema.org and click on use. The window closes and the entity type field is filled in with that class. Next we click on the save button to save our changes. Now we already have enough rules to generate our first knowledge graph. We do this by clicking on the play button in the upper right corner. Once the knowledge graph is generated, the RDF appears in the results panel on the right. We see for the subject that example.com is concatenated with the ID of the movie, as we defined in the rules earlier, and the same goes for the type of each movie, which is schema movie. Next. Let's expand our knowledge graph. Let's add the title of the movie. In the input panel on the left, we see under the ID, 
the title. As we did with the ID, we drag the title to the modeling panel. We release it and click on new attribute instead of new entity. Why? Well, in this case, the title is an attribute of an entity, which is the movie. Next, we connect the movie and the title, because they are related to each other. We do this by clicking on the link icon of the movie node and dragging the mouse to the title node. A link between the two nodes appears. Now we have a relationship between the movie and the title, but we still need to specify what type of relationship this is. We hover over the rectangle of the relationship and click on the menu icon. A new window appears. Similar to specifying a type of an entity, we specify the type of the relationship. In RDF terms, this is the predicate. We click on the magnifying glass so we can search the linked open vocabularies again. We search for label, select RDFS label and click on use. RDFS label appears in the rectangle of the relationship. Let's see now what happens when we regenerate the knowledge graph. We click again on the play button in the upper right corner. The same triples as before are back, but this time we have extra triples for the titles of the movies. Nice! Let's now do the same for the directors and their names. We select the directors.csv in the input panel. We again drag the ID to the modeling panel and create a new entity. Here you see that the color of the notes from the directors are different from the notes of the movies. Orange is used for the movie data and blue is used for the director data, which aligns with the colors used in the input panel for the different CSV files. The array of a director is constructed again by combining example.com with the ID. The type of the entity is a movie director from the DPpedia ontology. We drag the first name in the column first underscore name from the input panel to the modeling panel, so we can connect it to the director. The relationship between the two is RDFS label. If we now regenerate the knowledge graph, we see that new triples are added for the directors, one for their type and one for their first name. If we look at our knowledge graph, there is at the moment no relationship between a movie and director. More specific, we don't know which movie was directed by which director. Thus, let's create the corresponding relationship for that now. We follow the same approach as before to create a relationship between things. We click on the link icon of one node and drag it to the other node. Again, we fill in the predicates. This time we use schema creator, where the director is the subject of the relationship and the movie is the object of the relationship. For this relationship we are not done yet. As the rules are now, we will link every movie to every director. This is wrong, because a single movie has only a single director, but one director can have multiple movies. Therefore we need to add a condition to our relationship. We click on the menu icon of the relationship and enable the condition by clicking the checkbox. Next, we define which values have to match before a relationship exists. In this example, the ID of the director has to match the director underscore ID of the movie. In terms of databases, this is similar to primary and foreign keys. When we regenerate the knowledge graph, we see that extra triples are added for the directors and the movies they directed. Note that for our example we started by loading the data first and then creating the rules. It is also possible to first create the rules and then load the data and align it with the already created rules. We now have seen the core features of the RML editor. Next we will discuss two extra features that can help you during the knowledge graph generation process. Functions and detail levels.
In certain cases, you might need to transform the data before it's put into a knowledge graph. To facilitate this, you can define the use of functions on top of the data in the input panel. Let's consider the first names of the directors, and we want to use the uppercase version of their first names in the knowledge graph. We click on the plus button in the input panel. A new virtual item appears in the director's data. No changes are made to the actual data. We click on the U to update this new item. A new window appears where we can configure it. We set its name to first name in capital letters. We select the desired function from the list. In our case that is to uppercase. This function takes one parameter. To add that parameter we click on add. We select the value from the data. In this case we want to use the value from first underscore name, as is the input value for our function. We are done and click on save. Now we can follow the same approach as before to link a director and his transformed first name. When we regenerate the knowledge graph, we see that the uppercase first names of the directors are used, as defined by us in the rules. Note that more and custom functions can be added to the RML editor. When you have a lot of RML rules, then the modeling panel might get crowded. In this case, you can use the different detail levels visible at the top of the modeling panel. They allow you to filter the rules so that less information is shown in the modeling panel. At the moment, the level is set to the highest. When we click on moderate, we see that information is removed from our graphs. The predicates from the relationships are removed and only the edges themselves are still visible. This way, you can see where relationships are without knowing their details. When we click on lowest, only entities are shown. That means that attributes like title and first name are hidden. By using these five detail levels, you can show more or less details, depending on your current needs. With this we conclude our introduction to the RML editor. You can find more information about this tool and our other technologies on rml.io. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Until next time. Bye.